Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, expert video on why cloud computing can be a smart move for regulated businesses. Uh, my name is Matt Bertwistle, I'm the Manufacturing Industry Director at HSO UK, I'm very much responsible for our go-to-market activities in regulated environments and I'm pleased to be joined uh, today with uh, Bill Burke from uh, Merit Solutions. So, Bill, why don't you tell tell me a little bit about, about yourself and, and Merit Solutions? Sure. Thank you, Matt. It's great to be here today. My name is Bill Burke. I'm the CEO of Merit Solutions. We are a SaaS software company that helps medical device, biotech and pharma businesses use Microsoft Business Azure platforms, I like to say, but that's Dynamics 365, Power Platform, Azure, the tools surrounding that in their regulated life science manufacturing industry environments. And so our software uh, addresses uh, over 600 user stories that those customer, those companies have to and need, maybe not all 600, but they need these capabilities to operate in, in their industry with compliance and with some of the unique aspects of manufacturing for um, life science manufacturers. Thanks. Okay, so to, to kick things off then, um, why are regulated companies moving to cloud applications to run their uh, enterprise business? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great question and, uh, and I would just uh, start by saying it's it's really an exciting time for these these you know these industries companies that are med device and biopharma because there's a, there's just a tremendous amount of change and with that change is opportunity and um, getting the digital infrastructure in place and getting it in place correctly and getting it in place the the at the right time the right at the, the, the right spend level at the right stage. To, to be enabling what has to be operating and working digitally is a real challenge and it's a real opportunity. And so what we're seeing broadly is that, um, certainly it's a little bit different by segment, but broadly di digital infrastructure and getting to a modern cloud platform is becoming a, it's, it's not just a necessary capability, um, it, it's becoming a, a way to, to differentiate and compete. And at this time, um, certainly if, if you look at um, uh, biopharma contract manufacturing, many, that's many of our customers, uh, there, there's, there's clearly a, a, a capacity situation where two years ago, you could, it was very difficult if you were a therapy or a product company and you needed to go out and get uh, contract manufacturing for your formula, maybe you needed clinical batches. Capacity was a big problem. If you went to um, Thermal Fisher or Cattle, the large companies, and said, hey, I need this, I need this GMP you know, uh, compound, the answer was something like 18 months and $30 million, right? And so the, the, the market reacted to that, and what we've seen is that that freehand clear and that capacity swing happen, and a lot of capacity has come online. That's no longer the case that there's that constraint restriction. We're seeing it now happen on the other side that there that these companies are, you know, in many in many cases they may have been uh, services or, or PD companies that that added capacity and are now doing manufacturing as an extension of their history. And in other cases, it's just uh, CMOs that were in that business and scaled up to meet that demand. We're seeing that now it's about how do I differentiate? How do I compete? How do I offer a customer experience, a value chain capability that allows me to have differentiation and be unique and so I can execute on my business plan. And so that's a really interesting observation in our market right now. And, and, and so if you go backwards from that and say, how does that connect to getting to a, a cloud platform or what I like to call the right digital infrastructure? There are some really strong connections to how do I have that value chain differentiation? How do I compete? Um, you know, part of that is my people. How do I give them an experience that allows me to, to attract and retain those top those top people? Part of that are the the collaboration capabilities that I have, and part of that uh, part of that unique differentiation will come from how do I actually deliver on um, on a superior deliver you know you know quality level, a shorter time to market, 
a, a higher level of confidence for those customers. And so we're certainly in the biopharma manufacturing side, we're seeing that broader uh, market reality happen and, and that connects very strongly to stepping into and then getting into what we like to say iteratively, the right Azure business Azure cloud infrastructure in place. And med device, those, those drivers are a little bit different in the market. We're seeing those companies drive really hard for differentiation on quality and scale. So we're seeing companies that are in market or, or wanting to take share, um, say, how, how do I have the, the capability or what I like to think of as the central nervous system in my business to move, to move faster or with agility or to have better sensing or to have better controls around quality to make sure I'm then delivering that value chain. So it's a really interesting time in our, in our customer segments and we get to play this important part of it, which is getting that central nervous system in place and getting those companies uh, not just you know sort of existing, but capable to, to sense and react and move fast and deliver with you know sort of this integrated way they operate. Um, and you can't do that without getting to a cloud, uh, a modern cloud platform. It's just it's just impossible to do that operating with part manual, part this system and that on-premise system and that separate system. And I have seven different systems, one for each function, and 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 that just falls apart pretty quickly with this pressure of competition. And so it's it's an exciting time for our customers. It is, it's, a, it's an exciting time for HSO and Merit um, to be part of these winning strategies and, and getting getting these infrastructure capabilities in place. Okay, well that's 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 great. I mean there's quite a lot in, in, in what you've you said there. I mean you've you've highlighted quite a number of, of benefits that I think are uh, probably worth unpacking a few of those. Obviously you mentioned that the competitive drive um, and the speed that's now in, in the marketplace that, that means it's, it's essential to be able to react quickly and obviously cloud helping that. You, you talked as well about collaboration. Um, and maybe can you talk a little bit about what are the benefits of that and how does cloud help that collaboration aspect? Yeah, it's it's a it's a kind of a, a something you could forecast or see happening and when companies started moving their operational workloads into the cloud, and that's that's a big core of what we do at HSO and Merit. We're we're helping you take your supply chain and your your controlled material, uh, uh, all everything you do to plan, procure, control procurement, manage vendors, deliver. When, when companies started getting those capabilities into the cloud, and, and today that's many times the, the first step, right? But Microsoft is enabling this spreading out of what you can do with your data once you get into the Azure Business Cloud. In other words, uh, if you sort of look at Microsoft's strategy and why did they spend, you know, $25 billion on you know on this acquisition or, or invest into open AI with a with you know that investment um, or, or what they're doing with teams you're seeing a strategy by Microsoft to extend out what can be done with your data what can be done with um, the, the, what 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 can you do not just operationally and sort of seeing trends, but what can you do to collaborate outside of your four walls? Mm -hmm. And so now, once you get into the, the Azure Business Cloud, Microsoft is enabling capabilities like Teams, where in, in the past you're doing customer meetings, you're doing, um, uh, uh, you're a CDMO and you're, 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 you're getting customer approval to do a batch release to move it from a you know five liter tank of fermentation to the 20 liter tank, and they need to see the data. Well, you're tracking that data in your in your merit and, and D365 business system, but in the old days, you might have taken that and you might have shared that by email. Well, that's a big security problem because that's an open endpoint. So when you think about zero trust security and where you can have uh, problems uh, in terms of maintaining security, you want to shut that down. So Microsoft has enabled this capability to share that in a secure manner and in a live and in, a, in, a, in an online manner in a Teams meeting with customers and have customers participate in that data. They can, that data is housed in Merit and D365 in the Azure Cloud, but that approval can happen within a Teams meeting. That can happen in a, in a secure environment. It can happen in a D, uh, FDA defensible, uh, MHRA defensible audit where I can say, this was approved by this customer to make this 
next stage of, of production. These quality specs were reviewed and approved right here. I've captured it, but I've done that within my, my secure, security model. I've done that within my compliance model. In other words, they, they have the, in my compliance model, I determined that that's a, a risk process from an FDA perspective. They participated in that. They changed the data right here. I time and date stamp that they did it. I can see before data, after data value, so I'm part 11 compliance. So that's an example of extending out the, the cloud platform to a customer experience that is about collaboration. Because everything I've just talked about operationally and compliance-wise is important. But what really matters is from a customer's perspective, when I choose to work with you as my CDMO versus the other firm that is competing for my business, I have a digital repeatable experience that I can trust and I can I can do efficiently and I, I can do digitally and I know it's there and I have a way to also go back digitally and access it myself. So that's that's just one example of like 50 examples of how getting to this Azure Business Cloud platform is enabling customer experience. To me, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I think about lean from a customer value chain a lot. So from a customer's perspective, that increased my value of the relationship, my confidence, my trust, and, and you know, and it didn't increase the, 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 it also reduced the cost for my supplier who was operating with me. It took time cycles out of it. It took, um, you know, uh, it, it took like uncertainty out of it because now we're looking at the same data real time at the same time. Um, and it also then took time cycles out of the delivery. I moved from that five liter fermentation, that 20 liter fermentation, right now i didn't i didn't go back and forth for two days and you know waiting for your qc department to then look at it no it's right now so that's an example of of using this cloud platform to, to differentiate right how how do i how do i take now what i have in capability and operating efficiency and that sort of digital nervous system on my company how do i extend that out to a value chain credit right the customer experience and that value chain is is, is received so that, that's no, just no. one example. Yeah. Uh, great, great point. And I, I'm glad you touched on the com compliance side of things as well, because I, I get the feeling that, that there is um, a nervousness there, um, you know, making the move to the cloud. How do you make sure that you retain that compliance factor? Obviously, a lot of, a lot of companies that I talk to have the, you know, the CSV process is very manual. It's very yep. much paper-based. It's... It, what, what are the advantages of the cloud as far as compliance goes? I mean, I know you touched on some of those, those things with digital signatures and so on, but are, are there any other particular benefits that are worthwhile highlighting? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, two things. One is, is once I get it in place, it's in place. So once I design my compliance strategy, and, and this is how you do it, just you, you're, you're saying, how, what, are my, what are my processes that if are performing correctly can harm or kill? patients, humans, right? I've identified those, I've put a risk analysis against those, and then when I'm implementing my business systems in the, in the Azure cloud, I'm, I'm then uh, validating that the system has controls around those. I'm implementing some controls around those. In some cases, I may need uh, preventative electronic signatures, part 11 electronic signatures. The software does all that for me. <laughs> so once I get that in and defined and designed and operating, it's just doing it. I'm I'm operating the business where I'm we're operating our our, our work steps, our you know, our, our work streams, and all of that is happening electronically, sort of on the back end or in parallel. And so there there's an effort to get as compared to sort of the way we see a lot of companies that that you know engage us, they're operating with this manual capturing of those changes every time or semi-manual or as you said csv files and spreadsheets but they're printing they're signing those they're putting them copies that's and, and that that every time it, it's not just automatically happening it's taking headcount and people and it's overhead and and that doesn't allow you to scale you when you when you try to then throw growth on that or, or you know level up volume um then then you're adding like 16 more people like it doesn't work and then at some point you just can't do it right so you know kind of number one is getting to getting your is compliance strategy 
um, compliance framework in the Azure Business Cloud is, is all about this Part 11, Part 820 quality system uh, designs. The software does all of that for With Merit in particular, we're, we're ensuring that all the places that the standard Dynamics 365, in fact, does not do it for you. With Merit for Life Science, we're, we're doing it for you. So we, we cover all of those places that, you know, you, if you think you need electronic, preventative controls, electronic signatures here, with merit, you have it. With the standard app, oftentimes you don't, right? When you get an audit from the, the, the MHRI and you have to defend, give me, hey, here's a sample size of 30 customer orders you deliver. Go show me everything about them, right? In the standard app, there's an audit trail, but it's a big bucket of data you can't reassemble. Merit solves that, right? We have audit logic engines. So with HSO and Merit, we solve all that. You get it compliance framework in place with the software and now you're just operating your business. So that's number one when it comes to compliance strategy. And then you're taking away that apprehension because in the old world, I, I had my own software, my own servers, and I, 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 I was maintaining that IT environment, those big IT rooms with the servers of people, myself. And so when, when my quality leader came and said, you know, are, are we defensible? I could say yes as an IT leader. That apprehension, we're well past that point. Now everybody knows that getting into the Microsoft, in particular the Microsoft Azure Cloud, you're just in a way better, highly, way higher level of confidence in being able to defend because Microsoft is taking care of the layers of, hey, this, these are our data centers or SOC 1 and SOC 2 you know, compliant. They get those audits every year. So there's a there's a shift of that upstream to your vendor. That's you know, Microsoft Merit. Um, but shifting that is a, is a confident thing. And then you're you're able to then design those compliance needs and capabilities and then operate it. And, and that extends out to these these, as I said earlier, these these collaboration kind of workloads compliance built in. It's part of the infrastructure of the software. It's part of the Azure cloud environment. So it, it's a it's a different place to be, but it's a better place to be. And we can we can talk about then what it how your work changes to maintain validation, right? Because you're validating the software. That's an important topic in, in a cloud environment. It's different, but it's better. It's more frequent. It's less work. So uh, a lot to talk about there. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And I, and I guess. Um, one of the things that for any any company that is considering moving to the cloud, um, and I guess most of, of you know applications have been around uh, SaaS applications or you know Office for example and so on. So there is some familiarity. But if you've got an organisation that is looking to move major parts of their operations from on premise to the cloud, which workloads would you suggest that they might want to consider first? That's a great question. It's all the answer always is how do we tie the, that to the strategy needs and, and the, the objectives and operational needs of the business timeline wise. And so, uh, you know, what are the priorities of getting workloads to digital? Should follow. When do we need the prioritized workloads to be digital to succeed at that business strategy? That said, there are always some foundational. You know, kind of winners that we, we, we look for and we see. Material control and inventory is always that kind of a foundational thing. When we're getting into the op operational manufacturing, we want to look at how do we, how do we get um, uh, controlled material, meaning I'm, I'm generally dealing with serialized and lot tracked uh, material coming in. And so we're starting with, with controlled vendors. At, and in our world, as, as you know, it's, it's control at the vendor item level. Meaning for, for these particular items, I have to have audited and approved my vendors that can supply me, supply me those items. And I have to have controls around those. In other words, I need to be able to prove to regulating regulatory bodies that the software prevents my people from procuring something that is not audited. Effectivity now, I could, I could have a vendor that we audited, but their audit was 12 months and it ran out two months ago. I need the software to prevent that, right? So that, that's always kind of a, a place to start. Um, recently, last several years, we've had customers say, we not only need the vendor, we need the manufacturer upstream if that vendor's distributing. And so we have like two, two, two relationships we have to worry about. But 
So that, that's always a, a place sort of like, how do we start there? But we're, we're helping customers look at their inventory, look at ensuring we have um, controlled inventory, controlled vendor relationships. Um, those audits, the effect, effectivity of those and those controls, kind of that's, that's always a, a good candidate. Getting material control as far as, hey, I used to put all my inventory in physical locations and some of those had like locks, you know. And, and getting out of that world and getting into a, I'm counting on the system, the software, to digitally track and control what material lots are, different statuses, different levels of um, rigor in terms of control of that material, regardless of the location that it's in. So that's a big shift. Oftentimes we come across companies that are still operating in that old way and they need to get to a, I'm trusting the, the software to have controls at the level of, of, of uh, across locations and across, w w you know, within and across company locations, cr across geographies, right? So that's, that's always a big step. It's, a, it's uh, there, there, are, there are a lot, there, there, that's foundational, right? Because that enables us to do other things. So those are two big first areas that tend to be candidates when we help customers move into this operational cloud environment. And then business drivers may be, hey, my business is, it's higher volume, kind of uh, consistent uh, products, SKUs, items. Um, and so how do I get, uh, you know, quality, uh, quality instant, or, you know, sort of quality tests and quality um, steps in place along that and operate that? Or I'm, I'm more project driven, I'm more, um, you know, so uh, the, the relationship sort of drives the data and, and I'm doing more bespoke or, or make to order things. I'm transferring from, you know, PD into this in GMP environment and I need to handle and manage that in, in a digital way or some more project or I may be small batch, but lots of them. So those mixes and will start to help drive operational priorities on the customer side and, and sort of things that I started to talk about in our call. What are the customer experiences? What are the the, the val I call value stream levers? And so, it may not be I need to do better collaboration in a Teams meeting frequently. It may be I need to be able to sh uh, deliver a level of quality and, an, and a level of confidence in that quality of my products in a shorter delivery window time. And so, how do I prioritize what workloads I'm getting in? that are focused around taking time cycle out, like 40% of the time cycle of, lot of the customers that we tend to start engaging with is often laid up in quality checks. It's going out to a different system in a different department. For some reason, it's always on the second floor. Like, oh no, this, this, these tests have to go to the QC department on the second floor, and that batch cannot move until those, those tests come back. Sometimes, like, that, they're supposed to be back in 24 hours. It's a week and a half later. So that's an area that we're helping people immediately. How do we take time cycle out of that by integrating that capability, that function, that quality test? We're driving it down into the operational system now. Um, and so it's, it's kind of real time. Or we're doing conditional releases of that. Okay, it really should take 48 hours, and it's fair. But I want to release this batch right now or this, you know, med device run to the next part of, of manufacturing or finished goods, but I want to conditionally, uh, only conditionally release it, meaning I, I, I know I have controls in place that won't let me release that product all the way to finished goods until all of those sublots or sub batches that we spun off to wait for those quality tests get approved. So that's another example of it's, it's customer experience differentiation, but it's driven by an operational and a quality capability but it's value chain. I'm driving up the value, I'm driving down the cost, and I'm shrinking the delivery time. So it's a long way of saying that it, it depends, but we're, we're gonna wanna help each customer look at what's driving my business the most. I need the foundational pieces in. Of course, I need you know financial accounting in to capture all this. But then I iteratively grab and, and go after the, the prioritized workloads in you know kind of chunks to get me across to a digital way of operating. So, so I guess what I take away from, from what you said said there is is that for, for those customers who, or I should say those companies that don't wish to embrace the cloud, they are really 
putting themselves very much on the back foot in terms of being able to compete successfully. A a absolutely. Our, our customers are implementing these, again, I think a lot about like, you know, digital nervous systems and ability to sense and see real time, but, um, but these ways of operating and de delivering those differentiating experiences or products to, to their customers and, and, the, and they're winning on those capabilities. It's, it, it's, you know, it's not the only reason that they gain market share, but it's a big one. And um, it's, it's getting, at least in our segments, biotech, pharma, med device manufacturing, you know, it's really a heightened sense in CDMO biotech right now because of this capacity, you know, sort of situation. Uh, it, it, it's it's becoming the the only way to to, to compete is that you have to have this. It, it, it's a it's a price of entry. You have to have a modern digital cloud platform that you're operating with digitally. And if you don't, by the way, these customers are becoming more and more sophisticated. It's harder and harder to have a customer come to your facility and say, "Show me your controls and show me your." your quality systems and show me how you're going to deliver my product with high level of confidence and assurance and um, and by the way over time drive down costs and price show me how you're going to do that and you turn around and start pulling out three ring binders and people that walk around with you know paper and uh, you're, you're you're not going to survive because of the, the one over here that they're visiting next week is going to be all digitally enabled. They're going to be on, a, on an Azure business platform with our software and with HSO guidance to get it in correctly and have people that are they're going to turn around and show them how it happens digitally and how it's totally available to them transparently as a customer as it happens and how they participate in those release steps um, and how quality is built in and, and is, it's controlled and captured, right? Uh, it, it, it will be very hard not to be winning with yeah. getting on one of these platforms, yeah. Okay, well, as we, uh, as we about wrap this up, I guess uh, the final question, uh, I mean, it's, uh, you've just described uh, quite an incredible journey, but I'm gonna ask you for the, for the crystal ball, but what do you think the future holds for, uh, for companies in, in, in pharma, biosciences, um, and, and the world of the cloud? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I'm, um, it, it's, it's a bit of a, topical thing to say right now so I don't I'll get lost in the noise when I say it but I'm, I'm very uh, excited about the application of these AI models to data sets that we capture and we drive just the operational data sets and the customer data sets and uh, Jim Brenschneider from HSO recently published two two really on target articles on how do I leverage AI, and it's particularly in a Microsoft world, uh, business uh, apps world, how do I practically leverage AI and start using it in, in my business? And you know, the use cases right now, I think, are, are, are very like tangible and um, uh, realizable. It's, it's kind of the beginning. It's how adoption happens. What can, I, what can I do to use this new technology and get return on investment and get you know, payback right now, and they're and they're good ones. But I I actually look just just beyond that hill, and I see uh, where where we will be going with AI models and you know harnesses that we can run against our data, and how that really just changes everything. And so you think about that as a manufacturer and these customer uh, differentiation experiences that, that we're talking about. And dealing with these upstream supply chain, you know, partners that you have, um, but a AI the, it comes up with things you don't expect when you have, and it all gets down to having the, the very, the very best data sets, and that's what we do because we're real time running the operations of we are the central nervous system of the company. So, so I think you know running these AI, harness, you know, harnesses against the data that we're so with our customers, I'm really focused, and I talked to our team about this about. How do we help our customers ensure that they're capturing and extending and getting their data models in a way that we're going to be able to take advantage of this in a year, two years, three years? Because that again, you know, AI comes up with its own insights and its own. That's just the way it, you know you run it against data sets, and then it, the the algorithms come back with observations that humans can't see. And 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 so there there are just a lot of ways I think you know will 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 level up again as far as 
productivity, customer value chain experiences, and, and we'll see Microsoft continue to make that all accessible and usable. That, that's, we're at a place right now in AI where if you try to do this and you're not on a cloud platform, you're going to spend millions or tens of millions of dollars with uh, scarce people and tools and try to bolt it all together. It's, just, it's, it's incredibly difficult, but if you're on a cloud, modern cloud platform that has it built in, then you can literally start turning it on and, and getting these results. So I'm most excited about that. I'm, I'm a little bit, of, that conversation is a little bit ahead of most folks that I'm talking with as far as customers today. They know what ChatGTP is, but I, so I think you know, in the business AI uh, opportunity is gonna be really big. And I think we're gonna see that start to come online now with early adopters, but I think 18 months out, two months out, we'll be having like tangible conversations about how to compete and differentiate leveraging these AI models. And you can't do it unless you've already put yourself in a modern business cloud platform. So that, that's, that's what I'm most excited about in the future. Brilliant. Well, Bill, as always, it's a great pleasure to, uh, to get your insights and uh, it's been, been fantastic talking to you. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time and uh, look forward to having the opportunity to catch up maybe very soon. Thanks, Matt. Love, love talking today. Like being here. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks.